June 16th, 2015. Hello there, this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning. Glad to have you with us today. Oh boy, I hope you're doing well today. It's the second day of the work week for most people. Yes. Right? Most people. Okay, most people. Tuesday usually is. All right, what's coming up? Let's see what, yeah, today, let's see what today is. Today is. today is the 16th. That means today is fudge day. Eating fudge? Yeah, you like fudge? Love it. Okay, it's also Ladies Day in baseball. Okay. So if you're a baseball fan, lady, go find a game <laughs> somewhere. All right. All right. That's today, the 16th of the month. Mm -hmm. And here in just a little while, we're going to talk about acronyms. 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 Okay. Yes. That would be letters of the al alphabet. That, alphabet. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant to say. All right. Of uh, the alphabet, such as. Yes. L.L. Bean. Everybody knows and is familiar with the company called L.L. Bean. What does the L.L. stand for? I have no idea. Leon Leon Wood. Really? That's his name. Leon Leon Wood Bean. Good idea to get L.L. Yes, it's a good idea to use L.L. Yes, instead of Leon Leon Wood. That Who company's knows? been around for quite some time. Long time, and I don't think he's with us anymore. Okay. Okay. Uh, CBS. Everybody knows the CBS drugs, drugstore change, right? CVS? CVS. Uh-huh. What does right. it stand for? Consumer Value Stores. Interesting. Never thought about it before. That's it. It has to stand for something. They didn't just pick yep. three letters. That's right. Consumer Value Stores. That's CBS. All right. A and W. The root beer people. Uh huh. You like root beer? No. You don't like I do root beer. Not like root beer. My, but but my daughter-in-law loves it. Really? Loves okay. It, loves it. Well, A and W. Everybody's heard of A and W root beer. That's uh, Roy and Frank. Where's the Oh, that's uh, Roy Allen and Frank Wright. Uh, a and W, <laughs> Allen and Wright. There you go. Uh, M&M's. Uh -huh. Mars and Murray. Mars and Murray's. Partners? To uh, they, they were partners. They were. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mars and Mr. Murray got together. Uh, it would have been Mr. Wozniak and Mr. Wolford. Oh, my. But they turned it upside down and decided to go with Mars really? and Murray's. How no, not no, really. Not, not really. That's not true at all, in fact. 3M <laughs> is Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing. TCBY. That's it. The what? Our our producer got it. The uh -huh. country's best yogurt. TCBY. Very good. Very That's good. That's right. That's right. Uh, Kmart. What's the K stand the for? The K stands for Kresge. Their last and name. It, that's the last name of the gentleman who. Kresge. K R E S G E. In fact, there used to be a store. Well, not Kress. I'm not sure that Cress, I don't know, maybe Cress was involved with uh, Kresge, but Cress, Kresge rather, start, there used to be stores called Kresge, yes. and then they shortened it to Kmart. Interesting. Yes, okay. yes. Huh. Uh, Sebastian S. Kresge. Sebastian S. Uh, then there's the J.C. Penney. A lot of people realize or remember that James Cash Penny, well. his middle name is Cash, you know. <laughs> You know, of course, I had a cousin whose middle name was Czech, but he bounced all over the place. Uh-oh. Anyway, we also have... What else do we have? BMW, nice automobile. Yes. Bavarian Motor Works. Bavarian That's Motor it in Works. English. That's not the way they pronounce They say it over there. Bayerisch Motoren Werke, or something like that. Anyway, that's Bavarian Motor Works, BMW. That refers to, of course, the cars and the motorcycles. Right. Which yesterday was Ride Your Motorcycle to Work yes, Day. Yes, it was. Doggone it, I missed that one. <laughs> Wait until next year. I'll get it. All right. All right. Oh, there's more. You've heard of the smart car? Yes. That is a collaboration between Swatch, the watch people, yes. and Mercedes. Is it really? It is. So they put those two together, Interesting Swatch and Mercedes, and it's called a Swatch Mercedes Art car. Okay. S-M-A-R-T, smart. Zip code. Zip code is own improvement plan. All right. P.G. Wodehouse, the author, Pelham Grenville, Wood, Wodehouse, Sir Pelham, that is. A.A. Uh, a. Milne, who wrote Winnie the Pooh. Yes. All right. He is Alan Alexander. Alan Alexander. E.B. White is Elwin Brooks White. Uh, we have Hunter Thompson, Hunter S. Thompson. The S is for Stockton. J.R.R. Tolkien. John Ronald Rule Tolkien. Who else do we have? Michael J. Fox. What's his middle name? Andrew. The J, we don't know where it came That's, from. Well, he made it up because there's all there was at the time he he signed. Why not Michael A. Fox? Well, because there was already a Michael A. Fox. Okay. In the guild, in the uh, in the union. Screenwriters guild. In screenwriters guild, it was already a Michael A. Fox. So he had to use something else. So he came. He just threw a J in there. There you go. All right. Let's see. What else do we have? Oh, that's enough. Alf. 
You remember Alf yes. on television? Yes. That was one of my favorite shows. Was it? Ah! What did it stand for? Uh, Alf was Alien Life Form. Alien Life Form. His name was actually Gordon Shumway. Well. Yeah, he was Gordon. Interesting little tidbit you have there. I just thought there. that you might yeah. find that a little interesting there. That is pretty interesting. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, All guess right. what it's time for? Uh, lunch? Interviews. Oh. Two one. Today we're in the middle of a tobacco field out in northern Wayne County and we're here with Tyler Whaley. Tyler is the field crop agent for the Cooperative Extension Service here in Wayne County and how you doing? Doing great Wayne, good to be here. Good to have you out here in the field with us on this beautiful day. It don't get much better than this. It, this is it. This, I this love is it. it. I love it. Now, you know what? We're standing in the middle of a tobacco field and this is really a good looking crop of tobacco. It looks excellent, Wayne. Compared to, to other spots throughout the county, this field, you know, as you can see, it's very uniform, good color, good quality. This field looks excellent. Now, depending on where you live in Wayne County, depends on the amount of rainfall you've had. I, I don't know that all tobacco looks like this in the county, but I hope it does. I would say we're standing in some of the best I've seen. There's also some good tobacco in other places, but a lot of it had to do with the rainfall we've had, especially from the tropical storm, yeah. you know, a couple of weeks ago. You know, that's made the crop somewhat uneven. Um, but with time, we've had to go back and, and make some fertility adjustments and that sort of thing. Uh, so once the plant grabs hold of that, you know, it should be okay and, and come on out and recover from the rainfall. This is truly a science. It's become a <clears throat> lot more scientific than it was, say, 50 years ago, Tyler. Very much so. It has. And, and just the tobacco industry alone has become highly mechanized industry. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You can see a transformation, you know, from 10 years ago, really. Yeah. So it's, it's a big change. Well, the equipment, tractors are using GPS. They're using all sorts of scientific methods now just to grow the tobacco. That's right. They are. And a lot of it, like I say, the tobacco, the, the industry has changed. You know, a lot of our guys used to harvest by hand. we got mechanical harvesters now. You know, we have loading systems at the barn. So, you know, each individual box of tobacco has the exact same weight in it. So we've got Is scales right? at the barns. <laughs> we've got, you know, automatic curing controls. So it's set on a curing schedule. You know, we have technology in place now, you know, where we can do those things. And it's, it's basically hands-free. It has changed a lot because I remember cropping tobacco when I was just a kid four or five years ago. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I mean, we had, you know, cropping the tobacco, we suckered them and then we'd crop, uh, pull the leaves and then and run them up to the, the mule would put them in a tobacco sled and the mule would pull them up to the barn and then we'd take the leaves and put them on a, time on a stick. Yep. That's and then they'd go up into the barn to be cured. Yep, you're, you're exactly right. But like I say, times have certainly <laughs> times changed. Have way up. You know, of course, that was you, in the late 1800s. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but if you, if you talk to the general public, the first thing, if you mention agriculture to them, you know, they had the most, you know, impact on tobacco. I mean, when you, th when you think agriculture, the first thing they're going to talk about is tobacco and the stories, you know, oh, yeah. Pepsi and a nab kind of stories. That's oh, yeah. what they're going to mention. Yeah, RC you know. Cola and a, and a moon pie. That, that, you yeah. got when, it. When we took a break, that's what we did. You got it. That's and that was right. a treat. Yeah. yeah. So, so really the general public, they can relate to that. Most people yeah. have been in a tobacco field. And quite frankly, uh, even though there's not as much tobacco grown as there was at one time here in Wayne County, and there's not as much tobacco grown as in, or as much acreage in tobacco as in other things here in Wayne County, tobacco's still king here. Tobacco's still king. It's, it's our, our primary cash crop. You know, it's, it's a lot of value in this field right here. Um, but yeah, acreage is down. Especially, you just look at last year, I think we had a touch over 10,000 acres of tobacco. It was like 10,000, 50-some acres this year. We're probably projected, you know, somewhere between 8,500, 9,000 acres. So, I mean, it's going to be down compared to last year. And it's been falling a year before last. It was even more. It was even higher. But hasn't it been dropping gradually? Well, it's really been flat, I think, well, Wayne. <clears throat> I think so. But really, this year, is we'll see a decrease in acreage, um, you know, and a lot of factors are 
are to blame for that. Um, number one is there's a decrease of, of cigarette consumption in the U.S. Yeah. So it all goes back to supply and demand. Other countries, you know, Brazil, you know, Zimbabwe, you know, China, you know, they still produce a lot of tobacco. Mm -hmm. So, and they've had relatively good years from a global aspect. The production has been high for tobacco. So that's having an impact on it, domestic it, use. Is a lot of our tobacco going global? Does it go overseas? It is. We have a lot of international use, but st some is still domestic use, yeah. but most of it is is gone to the export market because the thing, the thing about that is, we produce a, a style and flavor of tobacco, you know, a, a quality of tobacco that no one else has. And that has to do with, you know, obviously management, but soil types, climate, you know, just where we're located yeah. at. A lot of other countries use our quality of tobacco in blends, you know, to make a cigarette. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Some years ago, the uh, tobacco market in Wayne County closed. And people, some people now are wondering, well, where do we send our tobacco? How do we sell it? How do the farmers make money with it now? Right. Well, a lot of our tobacco, for example, this tobacco in Wayne County, a lot of it goes to Wilson. A lot of it goes to Kinston. But they still have markets. They still have markets. Um, you know, leaf merchants there, for example, Alliance One, you know, Helen Cotton, you know, JTI, people like that, they have receiving stations in Kenston, you know, there's uh, Alliance in Smithfield, Wilson, so it goes, it's right here in eastern North Carolina. It's in eastern North Carolina. That's right. That's right. where the receiving stations are. All right, now, how, how far along is this particular crop? Can you estimate about when this was started? I'll tell you where we're at now. We're right at lay-by stage, and that's basically what we call last cultivation, because you can sell, I don't know if the viewers can see, but the tobacco's healed up, it's on a ridge, right. you know, so we call that lay-by stage. But this tobacco, you know, it'll be harvested in July, yeah. you know, really? so it's it's not as far from harvest as you think. You know, so it's 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 right on schedule. So they bring man. the machines in here, and they'll get those bottom leaves off. Ba that's a good point. They harvest by stalk position, and basically the the tobacco, it will ripen from the bottom to the top. Right. So first, like you say, we'll get the lugs. You know, that's three or four leaves, and then you move on up the stalk, and that's what we call the cutters. Uh, so that's that stalk position. Then you have leaf, and then at the top. Where the money is, yeah. you got tips, and that's all. That's not all done at one time. That's done in stages. That's done in stages based upon you know the timing and the maturity of the crop is how that's yeah. done. Well, Tyler, I know we're talking about tobacco here, but I want to touch on a few other crops here in Wayne County that are really important to us. Now, the corn's a funny, <laughs> a funny crop because you have to hit it, you have to plant it at a certain time. That's right. You have to get rain at a certain time. There's a window that you have to have uh, rain in order for it to tassel and, and for it to do right and uh, to produce. How do we do? How are we doing with our corn this year? Looks pretty good so far because we've had some timely rainfalls. We did, you know, have a stretch there where we needed some rain and, and the corn, you know, it showed stress, you know, twisting of the yeah. leaves and all that. But I think it was early enough where we've got some rain to kind of bring it out of that. We weren't at the critical time when the corn had stress, mm -hmm. basically. But um, but going forward, Wayne, especially the the corn that was planted the earliest, and when I say early, you know, 10th of April, something like that, we're getting to that window where we're going to need some, some rain. We need some rain. Um, and like I've, like I've said before, you know, varieties have improved. You know, they can manage water better. So they can miss a rain, but they can't go completely without water. There's no variety that's that good. So it depends on the time of the crop. Time of planting, maturity um, has a lot to do with it. So in the next two to three weeks, we're going to need some rain on this corn crop. Well, we can certainly hope for that and pray for that. That's right. All right. Well, Tyler, what about um, when we were coming out here this morning, uh, couldn't help but notice some of the wheat fields out there. How's wheat doing? looks pretty good. <clears throat> wheat looks pretty good, Wayne. I think it's going to be an average crop. I've talked to some growers, and they're somewhere around that 60 bushel range. I think that's pretty average for us. Not a bad crop. You know, we're going to hit some spots that are, 
you know, we're 75, 80 bushels, but that's looking at the farm average, you know, we're not going to be at that. But based upon what the crop has been through, especially the cool, wet conditions this winter, you know, some of it was planted late. We had a time getting our, <clears throat> our fertility program on. Uh, so that's had an impact on the wheat crop. But I think overall it would be average, but it's, it can be a lot worse. It could be a lot it worse, could couldn't it? Worse. Yeah. But I think we'll be okay. What, what sort of acreage are we looking at here in Wayne County for wheat? We're down from last year, Wayne, because the wheat price follows corn. And wow. corn is down, so a lot of those acres that would have went to wheat, they've gone to full season soybeans. A lot right. of that has to do with price, but also remember me telling you, you know, we had a lot of rain when we were trying to get it planted. Yeah. So we've kind of got behind the eight ball, so we said, well, the price is down, we plant it late, we're going to have a time trying to manage it, let's just let it go and we'll plant full season beans on time. So a lot of growers took that route. But I would say on average, Maybe 25, 30,000 acres, yeah. I say, in Wayne County. Okay. Compared to where it's been, it's been at 40. Have it. You know, so, so it's, it's dropped, dropped off. Considerably. Yeah. 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 Corn about the same? Corn, I would say, is a little, little less than last year. But I'm going to tell you, Wayne, we've got some places in the county that's what we call corn land. It's high in organic matter. It can yeah. hold nutrients, you know, <clears throat> good water holding capacity. So we can plant corn on those acres and we get a normal year, we can make some corn. All right, now I'm real curious. Is that a clay soil or a sandy soil? Most of the time it's going to be clay. Clay, that's what I was saying, yeah. in the northern part of the county. That, that Well, northern part, some, but mostly, you know, south and east. Oh, on, really? Along the Noose River. Oh, river okay. Bo okay. River bottom land. Yeah, okay. Um, so around those areas, you know, we've got some corn that we can produce here. After Seen some good-looking corn in the Dudley Mount Olive area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right around in there, around That's the news. Right. right. Okay. That's right. All right. Now you mentioned soybeans a moment ago. Uh, is that is that following the trend of a reduction in acreage, or is it growing? Well, corn acres is reduced. Wheat acres is reduced. Mm -hmm. I'd say cotton is reduced yeah. too. So we've got to fill that void. Soybeans Soy is going beans. in to to fill that. Wayne, it's hard to say right now. Full season beans have been planted. Some are still planting. We're going to plant beans behind the wheat. It wouldn't surprise me if we had 70,000 acres of, of, of soybean? soybeans in the county. Good that's grief. that's high. Typically yeah. last year, I think we were 65, something like that. Right. We're going to have a lot of soybeans. A lot right? of soybeans. A lot of soybeans. And, and one, one of the reasons for that is Soybeans, you can plant them on a wide range of soil types. Mm -hmm. You know, you can plant them on a the sand, you know, on a clay, and they'll do fine. They'll almost got... grow on a brick, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, well, really. well, almost. <laughs> almost, but there's more, there's less risk with soybeans. They're able to compensate uh, better. Okay. You know, they've got some drought tolerance to them. Yeah. So that seems to be a, a better fit than others due to price. Right. So that's a safer, a safer uh, crop for us. It's a safer investment this year, I would say. Doesn't pay quite as much, does it? Well, it well that depends upon yield, but the price is down on soybeans too. But I think you you run the risk of losing less <laughs> than you do with other <laughs> yeah. crops. Okay. That's a bad way to put no, it. No, I it's know, just but I understand. You got to play that game. No, I know. You have to go with that's the way right. it goes. That's right. Yeah. But I've been encouraging growers. I think a lot of it's going to be. You know, we're going to see a lot of tobacco and a lot of soybeans this year, but right. we've got to spend our time, I think, right here. All right. Because that's where we're going to okay. make it. That's where we'll make the money, mm -hmm. it's tobacco. Yeah. All right, two more things real quick. Cotton, <clears throat> how are we doing with cotton? Cotton acres is down too, yeah. Wayne, and, and we've got a huge supply in, in China. Um, so that's had an impact on it. You know, cotton can be expensive to grow at times. There's a lot of spraying, yeah. a lot of management with it. Yeah. You we know, still have a gin here, though, don't we? Yes. There's one gin here, yes. I believe. Yes, we do. Uh, Southern Bell Gin, yeah. Mount Olive. Yeah, uh, we do. But it's just, you know, the mechanization, you got to have specialized equipment for that. Yeah. You know, so that's another added expense. Some people already got it, so they're going to plant some of it. 
you know, just for rotational purposes, yeah. I think. Yeah. But but overall, the cotton price has is, is dropped, too. And I know there's other <laughs> things that we need to cover, but I wanted to ask you about rapeseed. Now, last year, year before last, uh, there was a tremendous crop of rapeseed, particularly in the southern end of the county. Yeah. Out around Mount Olive. That's right. And that gentleman was uh, grew a lot of acreage there, and it uh, he harvested it and apparently did quite well with it. But I haven't seen quite that much this year yeah i think i think william has been very successful he seems to be with rape seed it's a good rotational crop for wheat yeah. you know it fits his soil types um good so i think that's worked out well for him he seems to have good yields you know he's he knows how to manage it you know the crop looks good to me so it's been a good fit yeah. for him that's a beautiful crop, by the way. If you're just looking for something that looks good, I mean, look look at rapeseed. Yeah, That's right. it's absolutely gorgeous. Right. You can see it from 100 miles up, just about. It's we it's a, beautiful, bright yellow. Look, we get a lot of calls in our office. You know, people driving down 117. Yeah. Well, what is that <laughs> yellow stuff yeah. out there in the field? So yeah. I mean, it catches their eye. You're exactly right. It does that. All right. Well, we've been talking with field crop agent Tyler Whaley here, and Tyler, I appreciate you talking with us today from this beautiful tobacco farm. Anytime. Thank you very much, Thank sir. Thank you. All right. And we're back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thank you for being with us. Today is Tuesday, it is indeed, and we'll be Tuesday all day. Yes, it will. I checked on that. Thank you for being with us. And hey. you know, last night we had city council meeting. We yes, hope you were able to be there or, yeah. or watch it on Channel 10 or on Channel 99 at and mm -hmm. But if not, and you would like to see the city council meeting, you can certainly go to the city of Goldsboro's YouTube channel mm -hmm. and watch it right there on our website, which is goldsboronc.gov. And you know, you made a very good point there in that we broadcast uh, we show rather on not only Channel 10 for AT and uh, for, uh, Time, for Warner. Time Warner, Time Warner Cable Channel 10. We're also on uh, AT and T UVerse. A lot of people have that. Uh, UVerse is growing in this area. I don't know why. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure there is. But some. I haven't looked into it. But uh, it's uh, AT and T UVerse doing a fine job there on Channel 99. And if you have AT and T UVerse, you go to Channel 99. You will have to scroll down to find Wayne County, and then that's where we are on AT&T. There we go. Otherwise, you can go to YouTube. We're on there. Every day. Every day on YouTube. Okay. That's right. It's under WGTV Today. Wayne Goldsboro TV Today. That's exactly right. And you can find that w uh, with a link through the city website and a web uh, link through the county's website. Yes, you can. Well, there, and yes, yes, you can. can. All right. You know, uh, sometime in August, we don't have an actual date, I don't believe yet, uh, not, a, not a specified date, but we're going to be having a ribbon cutting for the Gateway Transfer Center. It will be complete in August. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, that's not that far. No, it's not. So we're gonna have a grand opening. We'll have um, a ribbon cutting and mm -hmm. have every, everyone will be invited to come down and do a walkthrough at the new Gateway Transfer Center. Wow. So that will be complete in August. And then the fall, right after that in November, all of Center Street will be completed. Wow. November 2015, Center Street will be completed. We'll have a totally unique, different looking, up to date, Forward thinking, downtown. And all those other great adverbs <laughs> and adjectives, all right? But uh, yesterday being the very middle of the month, yes. uh, next month is June, next month being July, that means sometime in the month after that, less than 90 days we're That's looking right. at. That's right. Wow. That's exactly That right. is really moving along. What about the street, uh, the uh, West Walnut Street? Uh, I know they're doing a lot of work in preparation of setting up the That all goes station. with the transfer center. So oh, all that will be taking place and be done before by August. Wow. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. You're exactly okay, right. birthdays for today, the 16th. Joan Van Ark is having a birthday. She's 72 today, star of Knott's Landing and a whole oh, bunch yes. of others. Joan Van Ark, 72. Also, Valerie Mahaffey, she was in the movie Sea Biscuit and Jungle to Jungle with Tim Allen. She's 62 today. Laurie Metcalf having a birthday. She's 60. Laurie Metcalf, you know from Roseanne. She played Jackie, okay, her, yeah, her best friend. Fine. Jackie. Laurie Metcalf has done so many other things. She's also on uh, Big Bang Theory. Yes. She's Sheldon's mother. Mm hmm. She uh, also, she's 60 today. Uh, Danny Bernstein, Bernstein was a, is a character actor. He's done many things. He was on Law and Order, also on Empire Boardwalk, 49. 
James Patrick Stewart, on All My Children back in the 90s, he played Will Cortland. Okay. Uh, he was all, he's also been on CSI, The Close, and a bunch of other stuff. Does a lot of voiceovers, too. Uh, Clifton Collins was in Pacific Rim and Star Trek oh, back in 09. He's 45. John Cho is in Sleepy Hollow. He plays Andy. He's 43 today. And Abby Elliott, uh, she was uh, one of the stars of Saturday Night Live. She's only 27, so she hasn't been on long. Right. But she's, uh, she's the granddaughter of one of my favorite comedians, and that was Bob Elliott of, of Bob and Ray fame. Now, you don't know who that nope. is, but Bob and Ray were just absolutely hilarious. They would always do, their, their act was always... Uh, a man on the street act uh -huh. uh, where the guy would walk up with a microphone and, and start questioning the other guy on the street. And it was just, uh, they, they just did so many routines. It was just hilarious. Thank you. All right. Tomorrow. Well, today. Today. This morning. This morning, right now. The commissioners are having a meeting. That's exactly right. In well, not right minutes. now. In just a little while. Yeah, they'll be uh, cranking up at 8 o'clock this morning. Thank you for reminding me. You're very welcome. They'll be cranking up at 8 o'clock uh, this morning with their briefing, and then they will begin the regular session at 9 a.m., and you're invited to attend both sessions. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. At 8 o'clock and at 9 o'clock on the fourth floor in the Wayne County Commissioner's Chambers, on the fourth floor of the Wayne County Courthouse. And that is going to be wrapping it up for today. Yes, it is. We happy are Tuesday, wrapping. everyone. Happy, yes, happy everything. And we'll be back in here tomorrow, so... Wherever you are right now, be there again right here tomorrow for whatever this is. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television. This is Wayne Goldsboro's Television. <laughs> and I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community. Your